Hey, welcome to this Social Church Tip of the Week. My name is Ryan Wakefield, and this tip is for church leaders who are running their social media accounts, or if you're a volunteer in a church overseeing your social media accounts. So here's your content suggestion for this week. As you probably know, winter has hit across the United States, especially in the Midwest. We've got snow outside as I uh, record this. So I thought, hey, Great content this week is feature something like your free coffee. So the idea is to communicate the message, we're ready for you. The goal of the post is to stay top of mind, let people know, hey, we're going to have church and we, we're expecting you. And also, this is a little bit of a, a kind of a, a voice suggestion is don't focus on the negative. Don't lead with, hey, it's icy and cold outside. Don't remind them of all the negative. Lead with the positive. So that's going to be the message example that you'll see here in the content. So let's jump right into my suggestion is we can't wait to hang out and worship together. The free coffee will be hot. See you at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. and come a little early. So that's the idea is this positive message to stay top of mind, invite people. Now, let me give you some coaching tips on not how, not just a suggestion on the content, but how do you get this content so it reaches the greatest percentage of your audience on Facebook? So a couple things you'll see here. One, it's going to be a positive message, which is great for social media. Two, use uh, emojis when you can. So uh, if you're on a Mac, what I am, if you hit Control, Command, and Spacebar, it'll pop up your emojis. And you can even type in something like, you know, beverage. And there's, you know, it's going to pull up and it makes your emojis searchable. So that's a good little tip. But I always recommend using emojis when you can. It scientifically increases the amount of people statistically that will engage with your post. Add some color, add some imagery, and makes it kind of stand out and pop. Um, you know, so when you can, use some emojis. And then here, you're going to want to take advantage of these options down here. So you're going to want to add an emotion. So you see here, feeling caffeinated. Um, that's not even an official emotion, but you can make your own. I don't know if you knew that, but you can make your own, then add your emotion. You know, another one, if we wanted to get rid of that, maybe, you know, something like we're down here drinking coffee. So you could add that and then add your location under the check-in. And so that's really important. Anytime you can take advantage of Facebook's built-in features, it's going to give you a, a little bit more visibility in the algorithm, get a little extra bonus points for using their tools natively as opposed to scheduling it with some somewhere else. And it's also going to help separate as people going through their newsfeed that the checking in, the locations, the emotions uh, gives a little separation between your content and some of the other content in people's news feeds. So anytime you can take advantage of that, do that as well. Now, let me just jump in here to the image because I've got some example images and this is probably where most churches go wrong. They, they'll they choose an image that's much like a stock photo. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it may be like the easiest image to get. You know, in this case, maybe somebody pouring coffee coffee or somebody you know drinking coffee but here's what's really going to set your post apart is if you can use imagery of people in your church so this would be an example of the summit park church that i i attend you know people in your church uh, because that's what the facebook algorithm really is designed for to, to bring out the personal aspect not the business aspect of facebook so if you can use actual real people and instead of stock photography, it will help you immensely. Now, here's what you're going to want to do. You're not going to want to just, uh, you know, so if you've got a great photo already of somebody, you know, or a couple people or a group of people drinking coffee, that's great. Two thumbs up. If you don't have that, then first thing in the morning, have your team or a volunteer, um, you know, take a picture of that. Maybe you're just kind of the, the only person on staff. You're the lead pastor or maybe a lead pastor's wife. Then when you guys get there in the morning, you know, get together, grab the couple cups of coffee and take a, a picture together there um, and, and use it in the same post. That type of stuff actually works better than maybe a great just photograph that doesn't have any life or actual real people in it. Now, here's what you're going to do next. Once you've uploaded it, you're going to want to tag that person. Now, you don't tag people who don't want to be tagged in your photos. That's a no-no. But if they're a part of your church, and in this case, maybe a part of your leadership or volunteers, or they're posing for the picture, first thing after this goes live, you're going to want to go in and tag those people. That's going to tell the Facebook algorithm, this picture is of actual real people. And that's going to actually start a snowball effect into your uh, news feed that's going to help you get a whole bunch more reach than if you would if you just uploaded a stock photo. That's really important. And then finally, let me say this. I, I If you want to go to the next level, 
I would invite those people who are in the photograph uh, to add a comment in the comments as soon as the post goes live. You know, excited to hang out with friends today. The coffee is hot. It's really good today. Um, that type of deal. So what you're starting is you're starting positive engagement on your post with the people who are actually in the photograph. Now again, you're you're modeling engagement. You're leading the way, and I'm telling you that will help you get the word out to your audience. You know, unfortunately right now with the business pages, which is what most churches uh, have, only 2% of your audience are seeing your posts. Um, so that's no good at all. So if you take advantage of these things, these tips I'm talking about, you, I'm telling you, your increase in reach will go way up. The, the amount of audience you're reaching will go way up as well. So that's my tip and content suggestion for the day. Here's what I'd ask of you. If you can, uh, if you have volunteers maybe that are helping on your social media team at your church, maybe comment in the comments below with their name and tag them so they can see the suggestion. Or maybe you know somebody uh, at a church who is over this aspect of social media. Tag them in the comments. This might be a great suggestion. I know being in the trenches of the local church, we're always looking for what can we post about. I feel like I've just drained all my content suggestions, ideas. So this is just a tip to help those people come alongside and say, hey, here's an idea and, and have fun and go at it. All right, that's the tip. We'll see you guys next week.